As soon as you bring Baby Yoda back in, it's like, uh, what are we doing? We're eating eggs. G'day guys, welcome back to Raging Rhino. Alright, I just finished watching episode 4 of season 2, which is chapter 12, The Siege. Um, this episode it was actually probably one of the best episodes out of the entire season. Um, it started off a little bit slow and then sort of built up to actually be quite action-packed and really, really good in the end. Uh, so let's break down a couple of little bits and pieces. Spoilers from here on out. Uh, so if you haven't watched the episode, go off and watch it and come back and watch the review when you're done. Alright, it starts off before we get the Mandalorian and then of course the chapter 12 with the siege coming up with Baby Yoda inside the Razor Crest trying to help Mando fix it. They try and make it this cute little thing. It reminded me of Groot, Baby Groot from uh, Guardian, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 um, when he's like pushing the button. So Mando's trying to tell him what to do with the wires um, and he's trying to tell him not to put them together, not to put them together, and he ends up putting some, them together. Um, it was a little bit of filler for the beginning of the episode, I suppose. Um, it wasn't really necessary. It was cute, I suppose, for all you baby, uh, baby Yoda lovers out there. Then goes into Gina Carano. We get to see her sort of beating up some thugs that have been stealing uh, some people's valuables throughout the, the town. Uh, which is establishing that she's sort of become the marshal of uh, the town that uh, Grief Karga um, owns or runs. I can't remember the name of the planet. Sorry, it's left me completely. Uh, they then show Mando that they've sort of created a school. It's a little bit different now in the town, things like that. So, you know, Grief Karga sort of turned it into like this village, family village. There's children going to school and he decides to leave the child there with them because he, they need the, his help on another mission while his ship is being fixed. So it's, it was pretty obvious that we were getting this episode. Um, I called it in regards to, and I think most people would have, that he was going there to get his ship repaired and while it was getting repaired, he's going to go off on a mission. So the mission is that there's a base there that's now run by the Empire or the remnants of the Empire. Uh, and they need his help to basically go and destroy it, which is built in a volcano or as a part of a volcano by the looks of things. He agrees to help them because the ship needs to be repaired and they think it's sort of an abandoned base, but there's some, something going on there or they just need to destroy it. I didn't really get the whole thing of what the, the mission was that they needed to do and why, but it was basically in the end that Grief Karga didn't want them there. So they go to do this uh, while they're doing this, they notice that there's clones. It's actually a research facility and it is qu uh, quite operational. So they notice, of course, the clones are in these tanks. They need to find out what's going on. Oh, by the way, the, the blue fish guy from the very first episode that Mando goes and captures and turns into Carbonite uh, is now working for Grief Karga. And he goes with them on this mission uh, and he's like the tech guy that can, you know, flick switches. Um... So he's there the whole time as well. Uh, throughout this, they find out that Moff Gideon is still alive and they realize that, well, the child is at risk now because they need the blood. There's a hologram that comes off, uh, comes up from the cloners. And what it seems like they might be doing is they might be trying to use the Baby Yoda's blood to inject into their clones to make them force sensitive. Um, and it, it sort of... I think it teases a little bit of that at the end of the episode, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, so they figure out that uh, Moff Gideon is still alive and Mando's like, they're like, you need to jetpack back there and get the child uh, to sort of get out of here because it could be a trap. While this is going on, uh, of course, they're sort of running down hallways, shooting, shooting. There was a bit of a montage and I kind of called it out. I'm like, oh, a montage of running down hallways and shooting soldiers, uh, stormtroopers, but uh, it was quite funny. Anyway, um, that's where we get to see the bit where, from the trailer, where uh, Mando sort of jetpacks away. That's sort of the, the end of what we get to see for him from him for a while. It basically then comes down to Gina Carano and Grief Karga, or Cara Dune, I should call her Cara Dune, and Grief Karga getting away 
uh, from the Imperial base before the volcano explodes. That's also too why the blue fish guy's there because he's there to, um, you know, uh, turn the shields off or something like that. They basically steal one of their uh, transport ships and they try to get through the door. They block that off. They go off the edge and the speeder bikes start coming after them. Now, this is where it really sort of ramped up. It was a really good episode from sort of this point onwards for me. Uh, the action ramped up and it just kept going, which was fantastic. It was the speeder bikes first. They nearly got them and they took them out. In the end, it was good. Um, then it was the TIE Fighters and the TIE Fighters came in. He shot one of the TIE Fighters with the cannon on the back of the transport, uh, blew up the back of the, the transport so the, the gun was out, couldn't take another shot. But um, as things are about to get, you know, a bit shady for them, the Razor Crest comes in and he pulls off some pretty cool maneuvers. It actually makes him look quite competent, which is uh, really, really good. He pulls off this maneuver and to get the last TIE Fighter, he's sort of spinning, barrel rolling down, straight down towards him, locks onto him and shoots. It was actually quite cool to see. The only other good thing that I thought that really came from this episode was the final scene where... Um, Oh, just quickly, uh, basically Mando doesn't go back. He flies off because he's got to get this child to Ahsoka. And that's sort of where we see him. It then cuts to uh, an Imperial ship that uh, Moff Gideon is on. And it looks like he's made some soldiers. Um, I kind of think, uh, and I'll be, I was talking to uh, Lost Jedi about this, and we sort of so thought the same thing that uh, Moff Gideon is trying to th synthesize uh, uh, this force blood sort of thing so that he can make himself force sensitive. I think that's what he's trying to achieve. Of course, we know that he's got the dark saber, and of course, that's where the episode ends. Like I said, it sort of started off a little bit slow at the beginning, but I honestly think that this is the best episode from the season. Um, I gave the last episode, which I thought was the best, an 8 out of 10. I would probably give this one a an 8.5 to a 9 out of 10. Um, it, it was quite good. Um, it, loses a few, it loses a point, maybe a point and a half for that beginning bit. And it's so funny. I said in one of my previous reviews from this season, every time Baby Yoda is excluded from what the Mandalorian is doing, the episode seems to be quite cool and kick-ass and badass and awesome. As soon as you bring Baby Yoda back in, it's like, uh, what are we doing? We're eating eggs. Anyway, let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. Um, what do you think of this episode? I feel like it's sort of picked up from the first two episodes especially. Um, so yeah, please let me know what you think in the comments below. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next week for episode five. Later.